breast cancer, cancerous tumors in both lungs, pancreatic cancer, kidney cancer, uh, miscarriages, esophageal cancer, stage four it was diagnosed. The person never smoked, never drank. And I made up a list, okay, of every teacher that responded, whoever worked in that building. Okay, John, how many people are on that list? Um, 44. Okay, and how many people are deceased? Or... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 out of 44. I'm Denise Schwartz, I'm a parent in the Northport East Northport School community and I have three children who have gone through Northport Middle School at this point. Back in April of 2017, in Northport Middle School, in the K-wing of classrooms, um, children were, there were odors and children and adults were not feeling well. That, that goes back in history once we did the research, it has happened in the past. Chemicals were found down there that were leaking, oozing, uncovered, being mixed downstairs. When that happened, the school district quickly cleaned that up, posing it out, repainted it, didn't notify the parents for 30 days. As part of the research we were doing, I did it the old fashioned way and I went to the library and I asked if there was any historical documentation about the school district. So there was a file cabinet with a folder with paper articles, you know, titled things like Sick School, uh, parents were up in arms about what was going on in the building and that was around 2000 and basically if I had covered the dates and changed some of the names I would have thought that we were writing the articles in 2017. What happened was they closed the building in 1990 and we were never told why. The, the excuse they gave was declining enrollment. You know, the company line explanation for why the building was closed is declining enrollment. And it's quite possible the enrollment numbers were going down. But at that time, people were getting sick and parents were upset and did not want their school, their children in that building. Then the building was reopened in the later 1990s and nothing had been remediated or abated. When we moved back into the building, all right, it was a mess. They said they cleaned it and did all this and all that. Well, when we moved back into our classrooms, I mean, the, you look up at the ceiling and the ceiling tiles were the same ones that were water stained from when we were there before. You know, we have always had issues with the roof linking and also just water flooding the hallways. It was um, built in 1956, and of course we've researched some of the history on that. It was not constructed well to begin with. The school was designed to be built in the south, okay? And that's what they called it, the Florida floor plan. I don't know how they ever got it by, you know, the Board of Education to build a building like that in the northeast. We had complained so much about the ceiling tiles <clears throat> that, um, you know, and kind of smelling mold, that they wound up having the custodians come in and they took down all the ceiling tiles in my room that had stains on them. And I noticed that as soon as I walked into my room that morning, there were two big green garbage bags left. What they did was, the tiles were too big to fit into the garbage bags, so they broke them up into little pieces in my room. Halfway through my homeroom, after I took attendance, we did the pledge and everything, uh, I just suddenly, I had the shakes, I, I couldn't breathe, and I collapsed. And they got me up, put me in a wheelchair, 
all right, and wheeled me to the nurse's office. You know, as I'm laying there, I got, uh, I'm sweating, cold, clammy sweats, and I can't breathe. And I just looked at her and I said, I feel like I got an elephant sitting on my chest. So she immediately called 911. You know, they're doing all kinds of stuff on me. They got the blood pressure thing on. And the only thing I can remember was the nurse, <laughs> the nurse calling me by name and saying I had her son in school. But I spent two days in the hospital. I went through every kind of test you can imagine. They determined it was an acute asthmatic attack. Until that point, I was never diagnosed with asthma. One of the things that they discovered in one of the science classrooms was a cesspool that was contaminated by heavy metals. The building had originally been a high school. So there were chemistry, chemicals were dumped in there, things from the dark room, and there was definitely contamination in that cesspool. The DEC was involved in that, there was remediation, but as we're told, those sorts of chemicals would have leached into the soil. What they found was high concentrations of aluminum, cadmium, copper, silver, barium, chromium, lead, and mercury. Okay, and they said all of that was above what, you know, should be there. The middle school is located just north of the VA hospital, which was the subject of an EPA cleanup and remediation. Also close to the Covanta incinerator, because I believe they're incinerating our garbage now, and the town of Huntington Landfill that is in East Northport. And then to the north of the school, you do have the Lipa power plant, which brings its own issues. The VA hospital is directly across the street on Millville Road from the school. And we didn't find out until just recently that um, the uh, VA was uh, required to remove uh, toxic materials from their property. And the trucks were going right by our school. You know, who knows if any of that stuff was vaping out of the, uh, the trucks as they went by. And every one of our rooms had fresh air intakes. There were times where we would come in to our classrooms. We'd find this reddish brown dust, you know, all over the uh, tabletops. You know, we n never knew where they were, the dust was coming from. I guess you'd call it a power plant, but what they do is they burn uh, waste and then they landfill it. And that's probably two and a half, two, two and a half miles from the school. If they're burying stuff that's radioactive or contaminated, it's going to get into the groundwater. The plume from Covanta and from the VA traveled from the VA and from Covanta in the direction of the school. They converge underneath the school, so it's in a very bad place. What were some of the um, illnesses that were reported from the kids, uh, from, the, from the children? Uh, oh, they, <clears throat> they had to go to the nurse and use their inhalers because they had trouble breathing, um, they had headaches. And, I mean, I had once in a while kids just put their head down on their desk and say, I just, I don't feel good. Well, I was sick very often, and usually it would happen around every other week. I would be homesick for a couple days, and then I'd be okay, and then just as I was getting okay, I'd get sick again. With she has his asthma and reactive airway disease, and um, it's, it's brought on by either a cold or um, uh, something in the atmosphere. 35 days for that, for that year, her sixth grade year, she was out um, because she kept getting sick. And she can't, she would get so sick that she would not be able to breathe and then vomit because she couldn't breathe. Every time she would get better at home and go back to school, within a couple of weeks, she was sick again. I usually got headaches and they would happen most of the time in sixth or seventh period. The headaches, though, they got, they got so often, that was during her English class, that the English teachers ended up sending me an email at one point 
letting me know if I knew that this was happening so often. And I did because every time she went to the nurse, she would call me. Riley had literally gone to the nurse dozens of times last year and called me from the nurse every time she went. And there were three times jotted down on the report from the nurse. That was it. East Northport Middle School was supposed to take a social studies field trip to Northport Middle School and even though we weren't going inside the building, I was really terrified of going there. She came home that day with the permission slip and as she walked in the door, I, I wasn't looking right at her and I thought I heard excitement and I thought I heard, oh, 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 field trip. And I'm like, relax, relax, don't worry, you're gonna get to go. And then I turned and looked at her and she was hysterically crying. The physical sickness ended up leading to her having a really bad, like an anxiety, like kind of breakdown. Because every time she would get sick and then go back and then get sick again. And it got harder and harder for me and harder and harder for her until, um, you know, towards the end of the school year where I just knew I was not, there was no way I was sending her back. The paper that they gave us for her variants to be transferred is, is it states it's just for the year. So I'm hoping that they're not gonna try to send her back there next year. It does make me a little anxious in the back of my head knowing that I might, that they may, may say that I have to go back there but I know my mom will try all her might to do something about it, and but I'm still a little anxious about going back there. And I don't think any kid should have to go through going there at all. I wound up getting heavy metal poisoning, the lead and the mercury, from working in that building. Another issue I have is skin cancer. I've had skin cancer for about 20, 25 years. I've had squamish cell carcinomas removed from my face, my arms, my back, just recently, and I'm going through treatment now. I was diagnosed with prostate cancer. The skin cancer, could it be attributed to that? Could the prostate cancer be attributed to, to the chemicals I've inhaled over time? We found out that the teacher that has been teaching in my classroom, G51, for the past seven years, was also diagnosed with heavy metal poisoning. There's another teacher uh, that was just diagnosed with thyroid cancer. It's ongoing, and yet the district refuses to do soil samples, you know, shallow and deep soil samples. They refuse to do groundwater testing. So, of course, when we became aware of all these problems and started doing our research, um, myself as well as others have spoken to the superintendent. We've spoken to the superintendent and the entire board at board meetings, written letters which have been um, sent to the board and published in the local paper. My first thought was we have to bring this to their attention and they'll be all over fixing this and, and quite frankly I've been very disappointed. Let's do the testing and let's prove once and for all what's up and they refuse to do that. They constantly vote no on the Board of Education to not do any testing, okay? Even though three of the board members vote, yes, let's do it, in the past two years, the majority of four always vote no. There are many educated people in this community, doctors, lawyers, attorneys, and the lack of support and encouragement can be very discouraging at times. You know, there's some desire for, to maintain the status quo here. And, and we live in such a beautiful place. We have so many wonderful families in this community. It's a shame we have our, our dark side as well. It's a sick building, okay? It's been causing diseases and illnesses in people for 40, 50 years. And people have been getting sick. Not right away, maybe. But as you can see from the list, it's long range and it causes death. Who knows if even one year, I mean, exposed to everything there, you know, we have to hope and pray that nothing, that that one year was not enough to do anything, you know, but um, I just, I wish that, that something would be done and more people in the community need to get involved. If parents 
aren't doing anything about what if their kids are going there and they know that these ladies have all this stuff about what's been going on there, they're not good parents and in a way they just don't care about their child's health or well-being. My goal here is to make sure that it stops happening, that no one else, no teacher, no student is made sick by that building. It, it just needs to end. And I do not want to read in 10 more years the same articles, the same story coming up again.